Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I would like to start to build a new robot arm. Last two months I spent to make a drawings for this robot arm. I did not finish the drawings, but I think I advanced far enough in order to start the build. This is going to be a 7 degrees of freedom robot arm. It's going to have the human reach, so more or less the human size, the size of the human arm. I plan to have the payload of around 2 kilograms like this is gonna be useful for many applications and the precision around of 1 millimeter. Those of you who are subscribed to my Instagram knows that I recently bought 7 motors like this one and I'm going to use them for this robot arm. I suppose that the build of this robot arm is going to take a couple of months so it's not gonna be very fast but we need to start somewhere. And as usual, all the drawings, including CAD and STL, will be available for my patrons. In this video, I would like to start with the shoulder or with the base of the robot arm. And this is the main parts which we will need, like huge 3D printed part, another huge 3D printed parts, some pulleys, a huge uh, bearing, small bearings, a huge motor, another huge pulley and some tools. And basically the idea is like this, the motor goes here. The small pulley goes on the motor, the belt goes on the pulley, the big pulley goes here, afterwards, uh, what afterwards? Uh, afterwards, this big pulley is gonna be connected with a cable to this small one, to the top of this one, like this. And afterwards it's gonna work. I would like to start with the bearings, so small bearings first. This is a nice fit, the bearing is inside. Now this huge bearing goes here. There is a lot of grease on this bearing, so I'm gonna put some paper. It was super difficult to install it, but it's in and nothing is broken, this is great. After this brute installation, my hands completely in grease and I need to wash them. So see you in a second. The next step is simple. This bearing is gonna be squeezed between two plates. One plate and second plate. The reason why I printed these plates in black is that I want to replace them for the carbon fiber plates in the future. And the last screw. Ta da! Looks cool, heavy, rigid, nice. Now I can get rid of this paper. This is kind of how it looks assembled. This part, haha. <laughs> now I will put this aside for the moment. And I would like to take care of this small pulley and the motor. So the pulley goes here. And by the way, it was a little bit tricky to print this small pulley because with the standard Prusa settings, it does not work very well. And I had a lot of strainings. But when I changed the parameters to the ultra detail parameters and the layer heights at 0.07 millimeters, it went to really well. So the pulley simply goes on top of the motor and afterwards it should be secured with the four screws. And so, as I told before, this motor goes here, like this. Now I need to secure it with the four screws. Ta-da! Motor is fixed. Let's turn this on the other side. And now this aluminum profile should be fixed here and this aluminum profile should be fixed here. Easy! I have the screws and I have the nuts. Now we will put this piece aside. Now I will take care of this piece. Here we need to install the bearing. So the bearing goes inside and afterwards it fixed like this. This piece is installed. This is a part of the big pulley and we need to install all the embedded nuts. This piece goes here. And 
and this piece is gonna go on the knees like this and afterwards we're gonna screw them together but before installing this piece I need to put also embedded nuts here and here this is the nuts which we would need uh, for the screws three screw here three here and with these screws I will tighten the cable on this pulley five more times And now I can fix this pulley. I need to align the holes. We don't need this for the moment. And uh, we should take care of this uh, intermediate pulley. It's difficult to say it like this, but I should put two embedded nuts here and I should put them from the axis, from inside and there is two holes for the two headless screws and these two screws is gonna hold the wire inside this small tiny hole and after the wire is gonna be wound it around so two embedded M4 nuts So let's secure it with the M4 screw. So I can change these two screws for the headless screws. This is two screws which I will put inside and it has a not sharp end like this. So this would be perfect to pinch the wire. So you can see the hole and now when I screw the screw in you see that it goes inside and like this it's gonna hold the cable in place. Now I need to put this axis inside here. I am not Ivan Miranda so I'm gonna use the real hammer. Perfect. So now this pulley goes into this bearing. And I need to install the belt between these two pulleys and also the wire which will go around this big pulley. And I need to do this before mounting this piece because otherwise I would not be able to fix the cable with these uh, screws. I just realized that I have a problem. I have these two belts. This one is uh, too big and this belt is uh, too small and I don't have any belt in between. So I think today I'm not gonna install the belt. I'm gonna install just a wire. So only this stage. And anyway, this is the most important which I wanted to test today. And for the next time I will order the belt of the right uh, dimension and uh, probably we will finish it next time. This is a cable which I bought in the local hardware store. And uh, the cable goes inside this uh, small tiny hole. This is 1.5 millimeter diameter cable and the hole is a little bit larger so it goes quite easily. Now I will fix the cable with these two screws. And so now I have the two equivalent lengths from each side. Okay, this one goes like this. I think I need more than two hands uh, to do this job. When you don't know what to do, use the zip ties. Looks not bad. So the cable is more or less installed, you see. But now I need to tension this cable, but I don't know yet how to do this. Now I'm going to fix this piece here on top with the six uh, screws and afterwards we're gonna tension the cables. And 
And so the assembly is almost finished and now I need to tension the cable. So first I'm going to cut these zip ties which hold the cables. This is first. And this is second. And this is almost finished uh, actuator for the new robot shoulder. So the things which are missing is the uh, encoder for the motor, which will be fixed here. And we missing the belt. But the cable reduction system is working. So if I rotate uh, the pulley, the output shaft rotates. Or I can do the vice versa and rotate output shaft and you see that pulley this pulley rotates like crazy. The reduction ratio of this shoulder should be low. It should be around 10. But this is exactly what I want. Also the output shaft cannot make 360 degrees rotation. It makes only something like 260 degrees. But uh, it's not a problem for me because I need a 180 or even 135 degrees rotation. I hope that next time I will get uh, the proper belt and also I will install uh, the encoder and we can power it up. Just wanted to show you this uh, actuator from different angles. So this is the output shaft. This is uh, the pulley which is between output shaft and motor. You can see how the cable enrolls on this uh, pulley. Cable does not slip anywhere, so this is perfect. And I hope that next time I will get a proper belt and I will also install uh, the encoder in order to power it up and see how it works. And of course, in order not to miss the build of the best robot arm in the world, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I would like to say a huge thank you to my Patreons. Thanks to them I built these projects and thanks to them I had a motivation and possibility to continue with the build of this robot arm. Here is the name of these best people. Thank you guys. See you next time.